Shalom, and welcome to Advent Lutheran in Solon, Ohio. Or should I say, welcome to Jerusalem Marketplace, VBS. We've had a fantastic week learning about how God showed his love for us by giving his son, Jesus, to die for us and to rise again to bring us new life in his name. Stay tuned at the end of this service and you'll get to see the video highlights from each day of our week together. They are a lot of fun, and I know you're going to enjoy hearing all of the songs and seeing the sights and sounds from Jerusalem Marketplace VBS. This week, our planning council is meeting on Monday at 7 p.m. right here at Advent, and our Word on Wednesday Bible study comes back after a week off for VBS. We'll be back uh, with Campfire Conversation at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, so, weather permitting, gather with us around the fire ring. Otherwise, you can find us in Fellowship Hall. We'll also return to our normal summer schedule for worship next Sunday with outdoor service at 9.30 a.m., indoor service at 11 a.m., and of course, you can find us here on our YouTube channel beginning at 11 a.m. each Sunday. Be sure to visit us online at adventsolon.org and thanks for your continued support of our ministry, both financially and with your time and prayers. Don't forget, keep posting those photos of you and Flat Jesus on all your summer adventures. You can use the hashtag Flat Jesus Adventures uh, on all of your social media or just email your photos to us and we'll post them on our Facebook page. Now, let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting forgiveness and life. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us sing together our gathering song, All Are Welcome. Thank you. 
reading from Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face toward Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. And then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another Jesus said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this day, for this wonderful week that we had uh, with your children, learning about your story, learning about Jesus and the great love that he showed us learning about what it is to follow you and to know that in everything we do, we can trust you because you love us. You show us your love and you show us new life. God, we pray that you would show us new life today, that in this message, in this reading, in this time of worship we have together, your spirit would inspire us to live life fully for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is June the 26th. June 26th. I bet you didn't think that that was uh, a special holiday of any sort. Although if you're wise to uh, social media these days, you know that every day has something to celebrate. Well, June 26th, I am uh, told via a quick uh, Google search, is uh, not only w has one thing to celebrate, but many things. And I picked a few of them. One is uh, National Canoe Day. National Canoe Day, that's kind of fun. Didn't even know we had one of those. It is also National Log Cabin Day. Uh, that's kind of a log shed. Maybe we can count that, uh, but I don't, I don't think so. National Log Cabin Day. Who knew that was on June 26th? Uh, and of course, my favorite, and I think many of your favorites as well, today is National Chocolate Pudding Day. Woohoo! Isn't that awesome? National Chocolate Pudding Day. So here's what I think we can do. How could we possibly celebrate both Canoe Day, Log Cabin Day, and National Chocolate Pudding Day all at the same time? Here's my plan. I think after this is over, you go rent a canoe, paddle down the river. Well, first, 
Get some chocolate pudding, put it in your cooler, go rent a canoe, paddle down the river, wait until you see a log cabin, either occupied or otherwise, and when you see it, paddle on over to the shore, take your cooler out, and enjoy your chocolate pudding in your canoe with a view of the log cabin. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's how you spend June 26th, right? Okay, maybe you had some other plans, right? Maybe you had some other things that you were thinking you were going to do today. And so while uh, eating chocolate pudding in a canoe with a view of a log cabin sounds great for someday, uh, it's probably not going to happen for you today, right? But in case you, like me, think that is actually a fun idea and something you'd like to do someday, you are in luck because National Someday is September the 15th, annually, every year, National Someday, the day devoted to doing those things you've always wanted to do but never get to. Well, there's your chance. Circle September 15th is a Thursday this year, so you might need to call your boss and ask for a long weekend um, because you've got plans with a canoe, some chocolate pudding, and a log cabin, and it's going to be great. Huh. So why all this talk about crazy holidays and someday and things that you probably aren't all that interested in doing? Well, because while you might not have known that there's a national someday, I bet you have a list of things you have said, someday I'd like to do this. And I've actually heard several people over my lifetime, and I confess, there's been times in my own life, too, that I have relegated my faith, my exploration, my following of Jesus, not to right now, but to someday. Someday I'd like to really work on my prayer life. Someday I'd like to really dig into the Scripture. Someday I'd really like to explore these ideas in my faith and, and make my faith my own, make, uh, make this following Christ more than just something I do once in a while. You see, that's that issue that is raised by our gospel today. The Holy Spirit nudges me. It nudges us to pray. And I say, oh, I'll do it before bed. I mark on my calendar time. Time to spend with God. We relegate time with God to a block of time in our schedule. Dear friends, faith is not a scheduled activity. Faith is a way of life. It is a following of Jesus. Jesus isn't really, Jesus kind of sounds cruel in this gospel, I think, sometimes when we first read it, especially that one where the guy says, uh, I would follow you, but first let me go bury my father. Um, that sounds like a pretty important thing. And Jesus' response is, let the dead bury their own dead, but go and proclaim the kingdom of God. You see, this isn't, when we first hear this, it sounds like Jesus is saying, you can't participate in what you are uh, planning to do. I don't really think that's what he says. He says, you can do what you are doing, but do it with faith. Do it while following God. Do it while following me. Don't wait to follow me until after. Do it during. Do it now. 
You see, faith following Jesus is always and forever a now activity. And in my sinfulness, I sometimes say, well, I know what following Jesus might look like in this situation. I usually don't work it out so 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 uh, fully in my mind, but I know there are times where I, if I were to stop and think, I know what God would want me to do in that situation, but I don't give God the time for me to follow him. Instead, I rush in and I do my own thing. And if someone were to ask me, hey, why would you choose to do that? I thought you were following Jesus. I would say, well, I'll get back to that soon. Jesus makes abundantly clear in our gospel today that following him comes first. And that following Jesus is not a part-time activity. It's not a scheduled place. It's not something we can say, I make sure that I make time for God at 11 a.m. every Sunday or 7 p.m. every Wednesday, or every morning for a half an hour, I spend time with God. No, (laughs) that's a great start. And we need those focused times of study and worship and prayer and reflection. Certainly we do. But we must not fall prey to the temptation that somehow those things, those times, afford us the opportunity to live however we feel in all of the other times. All of our other times are also focused and ready and centered and leading towards following Jesus. So when I go to work, I know, my work is is church, but when you go to work, when you go to work, you are at work, but you are first and foremost proclaiming Christ, following Jesus. Go back to that to that line. What did Jesus say? Let the dead bury their own dead. If we do not take Jesus with us, we do not enter into that situation of death, then we do not have a word to proclaim. Jesus says, to the man who says, first let me go bury my father, then I will come and follow you. Jesus says, no, 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 no. You've got that all backwards. The kingdom of God is not about death. It is about life. So you go proclaim the truth. Proclaim the kingdom of God. Proclaim life. Bring life to those who are grieving. To those who are mourning. To those who are hurting. Bring life to those who need healing. Bring life to those who need to hear this word. Because you have been freed to do so. You are not kept by your situation, your schedule, or your time, you are freed to serve your neighbor as an ambassador of Christ, a proclaimer of the kingdom of God, one who brings with you what God alone can offer. We can't bring it on our own. We have to do it following Jesus. But when we follow Jesus, there is nowhere we can go where the word of life and grace and peace and hope and truth and power and healing and peace are not proclaimed.
This is what it means to be free. As the the uh, lesson today from Galatians, Jacob did such a nice job of reading. For freedom Christ has set us free, but stand firm then in that freedom, in what God has, what Jesus has brought you into. Stay in this new life where you are free. Don't go back into this captivity of all of those things in the world that seek to suck the life from us. We are life bearers, freedom givers, because God has set us free in Christ. And now our focus is on how do we bring that message to our neighbors? How do we speak that truth to those who need to hear it? Wherever it is, wherever we go, and whatever we do, first, we do it as followers of Christ. You see, you cannot put serving and following, serving your neighbor and following Christ on hold. We can't get to it while we can't put it aside while we attend to other things. No. Instead, following Jesus. Following Jesus. Is, is about doing what you are doing now with the faith that Jesus has given you according to the message the kingdom of God has gripped you. It is present here. And because of that, we have hope and life and joy and peace and grace in abundance. Go. Go and follow and proclaim and serve. In Jesus' name, amen.
Dear friends, let us continue in prayer. As we've been doing throughout the summer, the beginning of this offers you an opportunity to share with God the things that you are thankful for. We will prompt you for several of those and then give you space uh, to list all that you are thankful for this morning. The second set of prompts gives us opportunity to pray for our leaders, our, our world, and those around us uh, and the needs that we see in it. And if we do not prompt you to pray for something that's on your heart or a person that's on your heart today, you'll have an opportunity to do that on the last prayer prompt uh, this morning. Uh, please take the time, uh, take the time to pause uh, the playback of this video if you need to, and just take this time uh, to share with God all that you are thankful for and all that you need, uh, all that those around you need. Uh, bring those needs to God today. Let us pray. Mighty God of all creation, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and for all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. and for whatever else you are thankful for today. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern the nations of the world, for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, and for all others on our hearts in need of healing, comfort, and support today. Hear our prayers. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the God of peace, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.
you 